In this video, I'm going to construct a model for portfolio with n risky assets. There are three learning objectives. First, we learn how to use metrics to calculate expected return and standard deviation of the portfolio. Second, we are going to learn how to use Excel solver to derive the minimum variance portfolio from the model. Third, students will be able to construct an efficient frontier for different level of risk target. The example used in the video consists of three assets, but the same principle can be applied to portfolios with four assets, five assets, and many assets. The modeling is useful because we can calculate the weights of investment in each asset based on a target level of risk or expected return. Let's learn together! Before I start, I would like to introduce this article to you. It is meant to supplement your learning. I apply the portfolio optimization concepts on the Malaysian stock market in year 2017. This article is presented in the 19 Malaysian Finance Association Annual Conference and is available in the internet for open access. You are encouraged to read and understand how the concepts can be applied in real-world scenario and local market context. With N risky assets, there are N means, N variances, and n times n minus 1 divided by 2 covariances. What does this mean? Let's look into this example. There are three stocks, BP, Barclays, and Tesco. So, there will be three means and three variances. The cells highlighted in yellow are variances. The number of covariance is 3 times 2 divided by 2, which is equal to 3. The covariances are highlighted in blue. The cells highlighted in green consist of covariances too, which have the same value as the pair of stock returns highlighted in blue. Let me ask you a question. If there are 10 stocks, how many covariances are there? The answer is 45. The expected return of a portfolio with N risky asset is the weighted average of individual assets return. Calculating the expected return using metrics is truly convenient, especially when there are many assets in a portfolio. This slide shows the metrics formula to calculate expected return. In principles, the weight of each asset is multiplied with the return of each asset to derive the weighted average. Take note that one of the metrics must be horizontal and another metric must be vertical. For example, a 1 times 4 matrix multiplied with a 4 times 1 matrix will give you a 1 times 1 matrix. This slide shows the formula to calculate the variance and standard deviation for a portfolio with N risky assets. Again, I would like to stress that using metrics is truly convenient. You need three sets of data, the weight, the transpose of the weight, and a sample variance covariance matrix. Take note that when the weight is horizontal, the transpose of the weight is vertical or vice versa. As you can see from the slide, there are two MMUT formats to calculate variance. You can use either one. We are going to use an example to illustrate the modeling process so that you can learn better. The raw data of this example is available in the Blackboard system. There are three stocks in the example, BP, Barclay and Tesco. The daily arithmetic return has been calculated. There are 1,851 data for the daily return. In the Excel spreadsheet, you can see the closing price of three stocks, BP, Barclay and Tesco. 
The daily arithmetic return has also been calculated here. The variance covariance matrix has been constructed here. I will not go through the steps for these calculations as it has been covered in the video on descriptive statistics. I wish to highlight to you on this area the rates of investment in the tree stock. You can manually enter any rates for a start. You can type 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.8. All right. Or 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.6. As long as the sum of rates is equal to 1. Take note that the weights are arranged in both vertical format as well as horizontal format. Such arrangements are necessary because we need this data when using metrics to calculate variance. That is the reason why the data is constructed here. You can type equal and point the relevant cell accordingly. All right. This modeling is highly useful because when the vertical weights change, the horizontal weights will change together too. As you can see, the weights will change automatically. Most importantly, the sum of weights must be equal to 1. Now let's learn how to use metrics to calculate the expected return and standard deviation of a portfolio with three assets. For expected return, I will type equal MMULT open bracket, highlight the mean return here, comma, and highlight the weights here, close bracket. Take note that the sample mean return is a one times three matrix. The weight is a three times one matrix. Therefore, the final answer will be a one times one matrix. Enter, and here is the answer for the portfolio expected return. Next, I'm going to calculate the variance for the portfolio. I shall type equal MMULT, open bracket, highlight the Rates of investment, which is here, comma, highlight the variance covariance matrix, close bracket. I'm going to add one more MMULT, open bracket, put a comma here, and highlight the weights here, close bracket. When I multiply all the three matrices together, I will obtain a 1 times 1 matrix. And this is the answer for the variance of the portfolio. For the standard deviation, I shall type equal SQRT, which stands for square root, open bracket, and point the variance, close bracket, enter. And this is the standard deviation of the portfolio. If I change the weight, the portfolio expected return variance and standard deviation will change accordingly. How can we make use of Excel to construct the minimum variance portfolio? To construct the minimum variance portfolio, we need to calculate the rates of investment in each asset in the portfolio. We can use Excel Solver to find a solution. The objective is to set the standard deviation to the lowest possible, which means to minimize the standard deviation. We have to set two constraints in the minimization process. First, the sum of weights must be equal to 1, which means the funds are 100% fully invested in the portfolio. 
Second, the weight of each asset should be equal or more than zero, which means no short selling. I believe an effective way to learn about concepts is through visualization. In the figure, point P represents the minimum variance portfolio. The red line is the Markowitz mean variance efficient frontier. All the combination of risky assets below the efficient frontier are feasible but not efficient as they do not offer the highest return given the level of risk assumed. All the portfolios on the red line are efficient as they give the highest possible return for a certain level of risk. Point N is not feasible as it cannot be achieved no matter how we try to combine the different risky assets in the portfolio. Next, I will show you how to calculate the minimum variance portfolio. Assuming for a start, the weights are 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.6. Okay, the sum of weight is equal to 1. I'm going to click data, solver. All right, I'm going to set standard deviation. You see, I point standard deviation to minimum by changing the weight in each risky asset here. So I highlighted the weights here. Next, I'm going to add two constraints. The first constraint is the sum of weights must be equal to 1. This means the fund is 100% fully invested in the portfolio. Click OK. I'm going to add one more constraint. Here, I'm going to highlight the weights in each asset. The weights of investment in each asset must be larger or equal to uh, zero, larger or same as zero. Click OK. Um, here, we have take the make unconstrained variable non-negative. That means no short selling is allowed. Click soft. OK. As you can see, the weight has changed. To form the minimum variance portfolio, we shall invest 40%, 43% of the fund in BP, 8% in Barclay, and 48% in Tesco. The standard deviation of this portfolio is 0 0.012 which is the lowest after considering all possible combination of risky assets. An efficient frontier is a curve line that is outward sloping to the right of the minimum variance portfolio. The portfolios on the efficient frontier provide minimum risk for a given expected return or maximum expected return for a given level of risk. Next, we shall learn how to construct an efficient frontier for a portfolio with N risky assets. In general, there are two ways to do it. First, we can define a few level of target standard deviations and use SOWER to maximize the return. Second, we can define a few level of target expected returns and use SOWER to minimize the standard deviation. In the figure, the red line represents the efficient frontier. All the portfolios on and below the efficient frontier are feasible. Portfolio N, which is above the efficient frontier, is not feasible. The portfolios on the efficient frontier dominate those below it, as they offer the maximum expected return for a given level of risk or minimum risk for a given level of expected return. The portfolios on the efficient frontier provide the best risk return trade-off. Now I'm going to show you how to construct an efficient frontier for a portfolio with N risky assets. In the earlier section of the video, we have constructed a model to calculate expected return and standard deviation 
using metrics. To draw an efficient frontier, we need input to the curve. The x-axis represents standard deviation and the y-axis is the expected return. I'm going to calculate the expected return one by one using Excel solver here. We know that the efficient frontier is a curved line that is upward sloping to the right of the minimum variance portfolio. Therefore, we shall put the standard deviation and expected return of the minimum variance portfolio as the first point here. After that, a few levels of standard deviation are defined as we are going to calculate the maximum expected return for each level of standard deviation. We are going to use Excel to maximize the expected return. Next, I'm going to set the target standard deviation as 0 0.012. which is equivalent to this value here. I'm going to use Excel to maximize the expected return. Let's click data, solver. We shall set the expected return to maximum by changing the weights of investment in each asset. We shall set two constraints. At. The first constraint is sum of weights is equal to 1. Click OK. Now I'm going to add a second constraint. The second constraint is the portfolio standard deviation should equal the target standard deviation. Click OK. And I untick here. I make the unconstrained variable non-negative. This is because we assume short selling is allowed. Click soft. You can see that the weights of investment in each asset has changed. The portfolio standard deviation is same as the target standard deviation. And this is the expected return for the portfolio. This is the expected return that we maximize using solver. I'm going to copy this figure and paste here. Paste as value. Paste 1, 2, 3. All right, so that I have a point for the expected return. I just need to repeat the whole process by setting the target standard deviation to 0 0.013, which is equivalent to this point. I'm going to click data, solver, just click solve again. All right, without changing anything. Click OK. You see that the weight has changed. The standard deviation is 0 0.013, which is equal to the target standard deviation. Now the expected return is here. I'm going to copy this figure and paste here. The process is continued for the rest of the standard deviation. We can use solver to maximize the expected return. Then we will have sufficient data. This data enables us to draw an efficient frontier. Once we have calculated the expected return for each level of standard deviation, we can use this data to draw an efficient frontier. The x-axis represents standard deviation and the y-axis represents expected return. Finally, we have come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching this video. Please practice the examples given in the Excel spreadsheet as practice makes perfect. I hope to see you again. Bye!